Good evening, and thank you for joining us, Carly. Like you say, new face, but uh, someone we've definitely seen behind the bench for a while there. With the <laughs> yes, very much so. And then in speaking with the president today as well, you can tell that that's actually you know, a contributing factor to the choice that yes. they made, and it sounds like that, that well, the relationship they already have with the players will be a key factor in their oh. success as well. Look forward to hearing that full mm -hmm. story. Gerard, been kind of unsettled weather here lately for sure. Yes, we actually have some abnormal temperatures in the mix as well in the forecast, but let's deal with our current situation where it's a bit scattered showers in various parts of the border city. We're at 16 down from today's high of 19 at noon. The humidity has been steady climbing during the course of the afternoon up to 72 percent right about now the winds out of the east northeast at nine kilometers an hour that UV index is down from five or thereabouts earlier on in the day as we compare across the region the Lakeland region we're seeing a steady buildup of clouds that 23 was hit at about four o'clock and in the Battlefords mostly sunshine but as well across the region too we've got some rain in the forecast the Battlefords their temperature 18 degrees Celsius a man was reportedly exposing himself to staff at a business on Highway 17 South in Lloydminster yesterday. RCMP responded to the complaint about 9 o'clock last night. The suspect is described as a slim white male, about 6 feet tall, with short brown hair. He was wearing white shorts, a black shirt, sunglasses and a baseball hat at the time. After being noticed by employees, the man drove away in a vehicle and headed south. Anyone with information about this or any other crime is asked to contact the Lloydminster RCMP or your nearest detachment. Also around 9 o'clock yesterday evening, RCMP and fire crews were called to a blaze at the corner of 48th Ave and Highway 16. Fire crews found a motorhome fully engulfed in flames not far from the co-op gas station. Officials say they were able to secure the scene after about 40 minutes. As a result of the fire, two vehicles that were parked outside the business were damaged. The fire chief says the blaze is suspicious and gave this preliminary assessment. Well, we had an incident here with a, a motorhome burnt up, and as you can see, it's kind of done some damage to the truck next next to it. Uh, the fire is suspicious in nature, um, so we can't really comment at this point as to exactly what caused it because we don't know yet until we look through look further through it. Our CMP are also continuing their investigation. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Lloydminster detachment. Well, with wildfire season already well underway, Lloydminster city workers have been out in force this week, making sure all fire hydrants in the city are working properly. Water gushed onto city streets this afternoon as crews performed routine maintenance work. Our public works crews are out uh, flushing all of the hydrants, and we do this activity to ensure that the hydrants are operating properly for uh, fire purposes. As well, the water can become stagnant, so we just like to give it a good flush. The city says the annual project can stir up sediments in water used for drinking or laundry, but uh, there's no reason to be alarmed. It can stir up some sediment in the water, and so we had asked people before they do laundry to run the cold water tap for a couple minutes just to make sure that there's no uh, sediment in the water and after a couple minutes of running the cold water, if there is, uh, it should clear out. It's also spring cleaning time for city crews and they've been out sweeping debris off residential streets for the past few weeks. To give people more notice about when their area will be swept, the city has a new way for residents to access that relevant information. Kathy Lee has the details. I'll be here in the same location, Jerry. Harm Reeves is doing his part to clean the streets and is asking residents to do their part too. Try to keep all the vehicles and trailers and boats and whatever off of the streets if possible. Although notification signs are put up 24 hours in advance, Reeves says people aren't following them. They're still not moving. A lot of them are not moving, even though we put out all the street cleaning signs in advance and uh, try to do our best, but still you will still find a lot of vehicles on the, on the streets. With two street sweepers cleaning the entire city, cars in the way delay the job even more. They typically just go around it and try to uh, catch it later. In response, the city has designed a new website residents can access for information. This year we've got a online map that uh, lets people know the areas that we're going to be sweeping in and so people can uh, check on the website and you'll be able to tell uh, what area the sweepers are in and also what roads have already been completed. Which they hope will encourage residents to move their cars for the remaining unswept areas. Between that and the street cleaning signs also advertised in the papers and everything so 
There's no reason anything should be left on the roads now. City officials are about a third of the way into cleaning the streets and they say depending on weather and how efficient their equipment is working, they should be right on schedule and should be done in about a month. Kathy Lee, Newcap News. To find out when your area will be swept, visit www.lloydminster.ca. Well, it's the time of year when some Border City residents are going hog wild, but not the farm kind of hog. This hog revs and roars and can rip down roads. Lexi Dogan has some tips on how to keep motorcyclists safe on the streets. For Nick Laley, the warm weather means one thing. He's been riding since he was 17 years old and says he gets out on his two wheels every chance he gets. That freedom of riding a motorbike in the air is awesome. Smell all the different things, the grass, the barbecues, is great. But Laley knows the dangers that come with ripping down roads on his motorcycle. You got two wheels, you know, get one on the gravel, you're going to be out. A car is different, you know, it'll balance itself. Motorcycles are smaller than cars and that makes it harder for drivers to spot them. The majority of the motorcycle accidents happen because you're in someone's blind spot or someone doesn't see you. Um, I mean, you have great visibility of everything around you. The problem is you're just a small little moving obstacle on the road and a lot of people don't see that. The Alberta Safety Council says all motorists need to be aware on the roads, but particularly riders on two wheels because they don't have the same protection a car has. The problem is that if there is a collision with a motorcycle, the rider is going to be as much at higher risk of getting seriously hurt or even killed than you are in a passenger vehicle. Poor weather conditions and gritty roads are also factors that all riders need to consider. And Laley says without the proper gear, you're flirting with disaster. Make sure you wear leathers, you know, and wear safety gear, just helmet and stuff, gloves, you know, because road rash hurts. So I would say just wear the gear is the biggest thing you can do for it. So whether you're an expert or a newbie on two wheels like me, both riders and shop owners say that they really recommend you take a motorcycle training course before hopping on one of these bikes. I learned the hard way. I laid my bike over once. I'm sure a lot of people have done the same thing. Um, you know, proper training prior to receiving that license would avoid a lot of that. I'd like to take it, just so that I could refresh a lot of things, because I think I know it and I don't. Honing your skills as a rider is key, because at the end of the day, it's all about having fun. It's great to be out there riding. Have fun. Lexi Dogan, Newcap News.